Today I'm going to show you how to set up a Grand Stream ATA so that you can use these old legacy analog phones or a fax uh, machine or whatever analog device you need to use on your call manager system. So uh, I set up some instructions already so we can go ahead and get started. You can follow along by looking at the instructions on the side here. And logged into call manager, we need to go to user management, end user, for step one, set up user. And I'm going to click add new. And I already set some, uh, some credentials up ahead of time, just not in call manager, but for my own benefit. Um, and I'm gonna do the username ATA user and the password of Cisco just to keep things simple. But then, uh, not done yet, you also have to go down to digest credentials and I'm going to make those Cisco as well. And then I'm going to click, uh, I need to make sure I set up a last name as well, which is I'm just going to say is elevator and that should do it. I should be able to click save. And that is it. Now you see some of these are highlighted. That's because you are going to want to save those um, because you will have to enter those into the web portal of the ATA later on. So make sure you're taking notes as you do this. Um, and we can move on to step two, which is set up the phone in CUCM. So I'm going to go over to device, phone, and then I'm going to add new. Phone type. Scroll all the way to the bottom and do third party SIP device basic and click next. And then you can uh, put in the MAC address. It has a MAC address right on the back of it. You can uh, use that or you really, I'm pretty sure you can just make one up if you want to. Um, doesn't really matter. So device pool, I'm gonna use default. Then we need to set up a phone button template or if it will, or it will give us an error. I'm going to set the user to anonymous and then I need to find the digest user so I'll press control F and start typing digest and it will take me right to that and I'm going to use ATA user which is who I just set up and then I know I need to do SIP security profile as well so I will use control F again SIP profile and I'm using the standard SIP profile and I know I need to do a device security profile as well. And now I think I can click save without getting any errors. Yes, I can. Okay, so these steps are all done and I'm going to add a directory number for this phone. And I'm going to use 4296. Internal. And the rest of this information will be relevant to your phone system more than mine. I'm not going to do a voicemail. I'm going to set it up with my calling search space and I'm going to leave this all alone. Give it a caller ID because why not. I'm going to leave the phone number mask alone and I'm going to click save and that is it for step one and step two. Now moving on to step three. I got this ATA and I need to, it's already plugged into power, so I need to go ahead and plug in the ethernet cord. And you have to make sure you choose the right port here or it won't read the IP address back to you. So you need to choose the one that has the global internet icon, not the local area network icon. Um, so I'm gonna plug that in. And then he should pick up an IP address from my network. So you have to have DHCP set up on your network for that to work. And I'm going to go and plug in my analog phone to port 1 on the device. And now I should be able to call this device from the analog phone and use the IVR to have the IP address read back to me. So if I pick this up, it has a dial tone and I'm gonna press star, star, star. And it says enter a menu option and I'm gonna do zero, two.
So I'll write the IP address back to me as 10.0.0.0.51, which is what it got from uh, DHCP. Now, um, if you don't have an analog phone, you can probably go to the admin page of your router or um, maybe do a show IP ARP if you got a Cisco device of uh, that MAC address and um, whatever method you need to use, you're going to need to find out what the IP address is. Um, so that is it for step three and now we're moving right along to step four which is configure the ATA. So I'm going to open a new tab here and I'm going to paste in the IP address that I got from the ATA. And um, I know for this model at least the default is admin and admin for the username and password. So I'm going to go ahead and log in and I'm going to go over to profile one. And I'm going to set up my primary SIP server to my call manager and the secondary SIP server to my secondary call manager. And um, I'm going to leave everything else at default. Now I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom and click apply. So we are now on to this to go to FXS ports, which is over here. And yours could look a little bit different. But here is uh, where we put in all those things that I said to notate. Now this could be a little bit confusing, but the SIP user ID is actually 4296. The authenticate ID is ATA user. And the password is Cisco. And we're going to use profile one, which is what we just created. And then we'll leave everything else is and click apply. And it says your configuration changes have been applied and saved. So now let's go over to status and see if we are registered. And we are registered. So we should be able to um, call. So I have FXS1 on hook and registered. So I'll pull up my jabber. And you hear that ringing? Hello. Hello. And that is working. So now I'll call for my jabber, or not for my jabber, from the analog phone. And this might take a little bit. You can, I think you can play with the inner digit kind of well. Hello. Hello. So that is it. Um, there are more settings you could play around with if you wanted to. This is actually pretty cool. Like, um, I know for FXS ports, say this was for an elevator phone, you could do an auto dial 911. And there's plenty more you can play around in these profiles and the advanced settings. Um, kind of a cool little device. But that is it. So that is how to register a Grandstream ATA with Cisco Call Manager 12.5. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, subscribe. Um, and I, will, uh, I plan on making a whole bunch more uh, videos like this. So thanks for watching.